I would say almost without reservation that the game parks of Kenya and Tanzania are, in my mind, one of the most exciting places to photograph. Uh, I've been there many times and I hope to return many times. It's a place where uh, no matter what you're interested in, if you're interested in small birds, insects, uh, the large animals like the elephants and the rhino, you can go there time and time again and find an endless source of inspiration and photographic ideas to work with. Uh, there are many places on Earth where there are probably more species of animals. Uh, the Amazon in Brazil comes to mind. Uh, but they're not accessible. You know they're in there behind the foliage and you can glimpse them from your canoe. Uh, what makes East Africa so exciting is that you can get to the wildlife and be in a situation where even with a big telephoto lens, you have a vehicle, you have a platform that you can work from. For the budget traveler, the usual mode of conveyance is a safari van. And the van seats nine people, but most uh, conscientious tour operators will make sure there are only seven in the van. This guarantees everybody a window seat and access to a roof hatch for photography. Um, the vans are very comfortable, and uh, they're kind of your boat or your island in a hostile sea. You can't really step out of them during the game drives because of the wildlife there. But uh, you're, because you're in a vehicle like this, you are in a comfortable situation. You've got all your gear, plenty of film, heavy lenses, and you don't have to carry them on your back. So uh, it's a very good way to get around and see them. Several suggestions I would make for people going on safari that are interested in getting good photographs. Make sure you have at least two camera bodies. Uh, this is for your own protection in case one breaks so you still can shoot. And it also gives you the flexibility of working with two film speeds. Most of the time you have plenty of light. You can work with a fine grain film in the middle ASA range, say 64, 80, or 100. But many of your great shots come at dusk or at dawn when the light is not strong enough yet to let you use the slow emulsions. Then I would recommend using something like a Ektachrome 400 film, uh, something that will capture uh, the animal in action under poor light. I would also suggest bringing a variety of lenses. Because you're in a safari vehicle, you don't have to be as parsimonious about loading your camera bag than if you're backpacking. You can bring a variety of telephotos. The most common lens used on safari is 80 to 200 millimeter zoom. Uh, I think that's excellent for maybe 40 or 50 percent of the situations you encounter. Uh, the most useful lens, however, I found to be the 300 millimeter, which gives you the same perspective as a pair of binoculars. Uh, this allows you to zero in on the subject and really fill the frame. But you'll also notice when you go to Kenya that there's an astonishing variety of beautiful birds that are small. To get those clearly, you really need something like a 500 or a 600 millimeter. And working from a safari vehicle uh, with a bean bag, you can really use those lenses uh, effectively and get clear shots. One of the challenging aspects of photographing in East Africa is that you have a limited control over your subject. The animals are free, and you're the one who has to work yourself into the right position to get them. Uh, for this reason, the drivers very wisely plan the game drives when the animals are most active. If you find a pride of lions at daybreak, they're very often hunting or engaged in social grooming or doing something interesting. If you find the same part of lions in the heat of the day, they will be flopped out and sound asleep. And many people uh, go on safari and they're in a hurry and they want to be taking pictures all the time and they're trying to photograph at an unproductive time. The light is very harsh and flat. And the animals are dopey. They're lying around trying to, trying to get some rest. If you go with your tour operator's suggestion, you'll usually find you'll leave the lodge about 20 minutes or half an hour before the sun breaks over the horizon. That way you're in a good field position when the sun actually comes up and begins to illuminate your subject. And of course that's when the animals are most active. It's also a frustrating time uh, photographically from your film standpoint because you're constantly switching back and forth between a fast film and a slow film to capture the action. But it's well worth going out there. The air is cool and clear, and the subjects are lit from the side, and uh, they're much, it's much more dramatic time of day to be photographing. 
how much control you have over logistics. In other words, your field position depends a lot on the terrain and the regulations of the park you're in. Some parks, uh, let's take Amboseli, for example, are heavily traveled by tourists. And as a result, they have made some strict rules about straying off the game trails. So you may find yourself in a situation where there's a lion uh, on a kill or something, and you can't quite get the field position that you want on it. However, there are other parks, like the Masai Mara, which is the northern extension of the Serengeti in Tanzania, and there there are no trails whatsoever. It's a huge open savanna, and there you have absolute freedom for where you want to move your vehicle to get the shot you want. Uh, several suggestions I would make to people um, don't ever consider you uh, finished with any particular animal. Many people have an attitude, well, I've done elephants in the last park. I don't need elephants in this park. Try to shoot each animal again and again, and you'll notice layers of discovery. You'll find that you learn things about their behavior, or there's something to a later shot of an animal that was missing when you were getting acquainted with that particular species. The other rule of thumb is shoot a lot of film. Uh, Film is expensive, but by the time you get to a great location like East Africa, it's the least of your expenses. And you want to have lots of film so that you can not feel tight about shooting a certain sequence. A motor drive is a great tool for capturing action sequences. Uh, if you don't have a motor drive or a winder, you're very often taking the camera away from your eye and losing your focus or the point of interest to your shot. So use a wind or a motor, and those do eat up a lot of film, but I think it's well worth having more shots that you can edit down than being stingy with your shots and saying, oh, gee, I never quite got the, the shot I wanted. There are also lots of surprises when you get home and edit your pictures. Many pictures that you thought were sort of pedestrian or were not very interesting actually have an exciting element to them, and conversely, many shots that you thought were going to be prize winners are a big disappointment from your slides or your prints if you've decided to shoot prints uh, you might consider making an album with larger prints in it that are just the best shots so that people sitting down to look at your prints don't look at 300 little prints they look at maybe 20 or 30 excellent prints